we will start by looking at part of what you need to do today after the video. You need to title this picture Declaration of Independence. It needs to go in on page 21 and you need to write in your handwriting this information on the rest of page 21. All of this information, except you don't need to write the letters. That just tells you the grade you will receive if you can only recite up to these points. You are expected to memorize this part of the Declaration of Independence. It's much shorter than the poem Travel, so that should be making it feel a little bit more approachable. The Declaration of Independence was mostly written by Thomas Jefferson. There was a committee for people in the Continental Congress who was appointed to write the Declaration of Independence. John Adams, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and one other fellow whose name escapes me, so I have to look at this more closely. I'll have to get back back to you on that. <laughs> you would think I would know that off the top of my head. However, um, Thomas Jefferson did most of the writing of it because he was the best writer. He had written some other uh, items similar to this beforehand, and so John Adams especially wanted Thomas Jefferson to do the writing. This is probably the most well-known part of the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That means we think everything that we have written in the Declaration of Independence is true if you just stop and think about it. And then they got specific. What is true if you think about it? Well, that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator. And yes, Thomas Jefferson and the men of the Continental Congress, when they adopted the Declaration of Independence, they kept a capital C there. They wrote God into the Declaration of Independence so that they are endowed by their creator, that they are given by God who made them. All men are equal, and when God made them, he gave them certain unalienable rights, certain rights that cannot be given away. So, we think it's true if you just stop and consider that all men are created equal, that God gave all men certain rights that cannot be taken away. That among these, so some of these rights that can't be taken away are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In other words, working to make your life better. That to secure these rights, that to make sure people keep these rights, Governments are instituted among men, so not to make everybody's life better, but to protect the rights of individuals to keep their life, to keep their liberty, and to work and make a good life for themselves. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. In other words, we have governments to protect the rights of individual people to these things. And that governments derive, that means get, deriving their just powers. So the power of government comes from the consent, the agreement of the governed. This needs to be copied over into your booklet and you need to start memorizing it. But don't do it now. Keep watching the video. Come back to this spot if you need to. The reason I want you to keep watching this video is we are going to zoom out a little bit and talk about what it took to get the Declaration of Independence written and adopted. So you don't need to fill in any blanks here, but it's really important to know the history of it. So the Continental Congress grew out of the need for a united response to the Stamp Act. That was way back in 1765. So the Continental Congress is now 10 years old off and on. 
Delegates were elected by each colony. There were three delegates per colony. They made laws for the colonies. Laws about taxes and who was in charge of the army. The Continental Congress made George Washington the fellow who was in charge of the army, but they still had not said, we don't want to be part of England. Even after the battles of Lexington and Concord, even after the Battle of Bunker Hill, which actually happened on Breed's Hill, about one out of every three colonists still wanted the British to win. Remember, it was a Tory, somebody who wanted the British to win, who took the British army around the Continentals, around us, and almost trapped us when we were fighting around New York City. So because one out of every three people still wanted us to be part of England, the rest of the colonies, the people who were in the Continental Congress, they weren't really willing to risk having people unhappy with them if they weren't absolutely sure that the colony they represented wanted independence. One thing that changed a lot of regular colonists' minds was a booklet, not an entire book, just a booklet. It's actually called a pamphlet. It was named Common Sense. It was written by a fellow called Thomas Paine in January of 1776. Why was it important? Well, first, because it urged independence. It said, all right, people, think about it. The British Army has been killing us. Lexington, Concord, Boston, they're not going away. The only way we can get rid of them is to be our own nation, our own country. The other reason common sense was so important is it was written in language that normal people could understand. By June of 1776, enough people had read common sense, enough people had talked about the fact that the British Army wasn't going away. Continental Congress felt like they should probably get serious about taking a vote whether or not the United States should become its own country. This was proposed by a guy, Richard Henry Lee, in June. They wanted the delegates to have time to go home and check to be sure of what their colony's opinion was. During that month, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. He stayed behind in Philadelphia and wrote the Declaration of Independence. And basically, we'll talk about this tomorrow, the Declaration of Independence it says the United States, it declares the United States is independent of England and any other nation. We should be free of English laws. We should make our own laws. Congress approved the Declaration of Independence on the final date that you have to know for fifth grade for me. You must know it happened on July 4th, 1776. Now, what actually happened, the vote was taken on July 2nd, 1776. So they voted, yes, the United States should be its own nation on July 2nd, 1776. And John Adams writes this letter home to his wife and says, this is going to be a day that will be celebrated forever as the birthday of the United States. Well, he was off by two days. The reason we celebrate July 4th is after July 2nd, when they said, yes, we will be independent, Continental Congress took two more days to rework the wording of the Declaration of Independence. So by July 4th, the document that we know as the Declaration of Independence, that's when it was adopted and signed. And this was a big deal. I am hoping the video I'm about to show you comes through. Um, it is from a PBS video series, um, so it might be under 
um, it might be under copyright. And so if that is the case, I will have it linked up later, but I want to try to show it to you so I can talk to you about some things that it shows in the video, but it doesn't explain. There's lots of historical details in here, but it doesn't really explain them. So this is from the PBS documentary about John Adams' life. You can go visit Independence Hall in Philadelphia nowadays. It looks just like this. Don't forget that you will be needing to color a picture of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. So this can give you some ideas of what to color the background and so forth. We now come to the vote. A resolution proposed by Mr. Lee. That's, oops, got to rewind it a little bit. That fellow is Benjamin Franklin, the old guy with the bald head and the long gray hair. But these colonies are, and of a right ought to be. That is John Hancock. We met him in Boston. He was the president of the Continental Congress. Free and independent states. And that all political connection between them and the country of Great Britain is, and of a right ought to be, that's John Adams. Totally dissolved. Look how serious these fellows are. They realize the decision that they are making. Yes, it's a decision for all of the United States, but they know they are going up against the best army in the world, the most powerful nation in the world at the time, and they are saying, we want to be independent of you we are willing to fight for it and we know there's a good chance we will lose if we lose we people who are about to vote to be independent we know we will lose everything oh i'm sure they vote by colony there are three representatives so that there's not a tie. The goal is to be absolutely in agreement so that every one of the 13 colonies agrees to be independent. That's why there's some tension here. There are colonies that up until the vote was taken these colonies had people saying, no, 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 we should not be independent. We don't dare do this. New Hampshire, vote yes. So New Hampshire, yes, we should be independent. Rhode Island. Rhode Island votes yes. Massachusetts. Massachusetts votes yes. New York. Up until this point, the representatives from New York had said, there is no way we can be independent. Part of the reason was they were scared because the British Army was in New York City. They did not want to stand up and say we should be independent. They were too scared. New York has yet to receive new instructions from its constituent assembly. We therefore respectfully abstain. So John Adams had spent a lot of time talking with the representatives from New York. He convinced them not to vote no, because everybody agreeing, all the 13 colonies agreeing was incredibly important. So New York abstained. They did not vote yes to be independent, but they didn't vote no. Now, this is an interesting bit. This fellow who just walked in the door, if I can get it back where I need it to be. The fellow who just walked in the door is 
going to break the tie for his colony. Remember, there's three people representing each colony. And there he is. Someone rode all night in an awful storm to go get this fellow and bring him back to the Continental Congress and break the tie for his colony. And there's a lot written about that ride, and it was pretty incredible. And you can see he just barely got there on time. Connecticut. Connecticut votes yes. New Jersey. New Jersey votes yes. Pennsylvania. Now you see there's only two people here sitting for Pennsylvania. The third fellow was another one who had argued a lot that we should not be independent. He thought it was wrong. But in order to allow every one of the 13 colonies to agree, he stayed away so that Pennsylvania could vote as Ben Franklin is about to say. Pennsylvania votes yes. Delaware. Now, you'll notice also this guy has his head wrapped up. Part of the reason he was not there was because he was injured badly. And yet he made that ride in spite of his own ill health, in spite of the fact that it could well have killed him. He went to vote for the Declaration of Independence. Delaware votes yes. Virginia. Virginia votes yes. Maryland. Maryland votes yes. North Carolina. North Carolina votes yes. South Carolina. South Carolina votes yes. Georgia. Georgia votes yes. The vote stands. 12 for independence, none against, but one abstention. Resolution carries. You'll notice they are not jumping up and down. They're not high-fiving each other. This was a hugely serious step. And they didn't know how it was going to turn out. Pretty amazing. I really hope it lets that video play. If not, I do have it linked up next, or if you just want to go watch it again without listening to me. The next thing I want to show you is what happened to those men. Because that wasn't the end of their story. And I'm hoping this video plays too. If not, you'll have to go watch it separately too. Fifty-six men signed the Declaration of Independence. Fifty-six men signed a document guaranteeing our right to pursue our happiness. What sort of men were these? Twenty-four were judges and lawyers. Nine were farmers and plantation owners. Eleven were merchants. The remaining twelve were doctors, ministers, and politicians well-educated men of means, knowing full well that signing such a document would mean certain death if captured. Fire! These 56 men sacrificed everything to ensure our freedom. Five were tortured and subsequently died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. So now you can understand a little bit of 
why they were so serious. This is what happened afterwards. Nine died fighting the Revolutionary War. Signer and New York delegate Francis Lewis was born in Wales, the only child of a clergyman and orphaned at an early age. His signature proved costly indeed. Francis Lewis saw his home plundered and properties destroyed. The enemy incarcerated his wife. Put her in prison. And she died months later. Signer Carter Braxton, born in Virginia, invested much of his wealth as a successful planter and trader into the revolutionary cause. The British destroyed his private fleet as well as a number of his plantations. After selling his home and remaining possessions to pay his debts, Carter Braxton died in rags. The signers of the Declaration of Independence were men of courage. Men such as signer Thomas McKean, born in Pennsylvania in 1734. Continually hounded by enemy pursuers, Thomas was forced to move his family on a constant basis. He served in Congress without pay. His reward? A family kept in hiding. His possessions taken away. A life in abject poverty. Signer John Hart was a highly successful New Jersey farmer. He served as a Justice of the Peace and a member of the New Jersey Assembly. Later, John Hart became a delegate to the Continental Congress. After being driven from his dying wife's bedside, his 13 children having fled for their lives, John Hart lived in the woods and forest caves for over a year. He returned home only to find his wife dead and his children vanished. Weeks later, John Hart died from exhaustion and a broken spirit. Signers Philip Livingston and Lewis Morris experienced similar fates. And then there's the remarkable story of signer Thomas Nelson, Jr. Thomas Nelson, Jr. lived his life before the war as a Virginia planter, soldier, and statesman. His home was abruptly taken by British General Cornwallis for use as headquarters during the Battle of Yorktown. Governor Nelson became incensed as American guns would not engage. Why do you spare my home? He decried. Their response? Sir, out of respect for you. Frustrated, Nelson demanded, Give me the cannon! Then proceeded to destroy the palatial residence himself. Yet this was not the end of his heroic sacrifice. Nelson raised two million dollars, pledging his own estates to support the revolutionary cause. His property was forfeited when a peacetime Congress refused to honor that debt. Thomas Nelson Jr. died a few years later, bankrupt at age 50. Thomas Nelson Jr. wasn't alone as soldiers and vandals ransacked and pilfered the homes of signers Clymer. Ellery, Gwinnett, Hall, Hayward, Middleton, Rutledge, and Walton. So let us honor the unparalleled sacrifices of these 56 men and thank them. our social studies book there is a copy of the Declaration of Independence with those names signed to it and it's always fun to take some time to look at those I strongly suggest you do so your assignment today is to be sure that you have colored the Declaration of Independence I am not taping this in because you need to copy in your own handwriting these lines and begin memorizing them and tape in the background the backstory of the Declaration of Independence. 
that social studies for today. And if any of those videos didn't play, make sure you go down to the next checkboxes and play those videos because it's very important that you see them.